Hey Hornets, welcome to the 18th episode of KVTV. I'm Alice Scott. And I'm Evie Barnard. In this week's episode, we'll explore competition within our school and neighborhood. We'll watch Healing's Girls Lacrosse team in action. We'll also learn about the AISD wide enforced dress code. Finally, we'll explore the local restaurant scene in KVTV's recurring series, People in Our Neighborhood. And hey Hornets, make sure to stay tuned until the end. We have a special contest in store for you. All this coming up next on KVTV. It's Tuesday, so it's a news day. Here's the buzz for this week. Keeling's lacrosse team is in the full swing of things. The lacrosse season started just last month, and the teams are preparing for their upcoming game. Aubrey Howe and Skylar Jones give us more. With the blow of a whistle, lacrosse practice begins, marking the beginning of a season that includes some catching, a bit of passing, and a whole lot of scrimmaging. And despite having a level of fun, the sport can also be difficult. Um, sometimes there are some um, large like physical challenges, um, and you have to be really fit, and you have to have endurance. Um, and then you also, like availability, you have to be available for like most of the games. As one of the most inclusive sports available for students to play at Keeling, the lacrosse team doesn't count finding a player as a problem, most likely because students are looking for a certain combination of qualities that Keeling lacrosse happens to offer. I think students join because they realize that it's a spot where they can have fun after school and be active, but it's low stakes. You don't have to have any experience. This can be the first sport you've ever played and you're welcome on the team and you get playing time in games. Um, and so it's a great experience to learn with each other. An important element in any kind of sports team is having a wide variety of players to farther diversify an already competitive team. I think being able to have all grade levels and all experience levels makes our team a really diverse place. Um, it's not just one set of students who are able to participate. It's literally open to every single student on this campus. Um, and so I think that makes it really unique. And this has been Aubrey Howe reporting for KBTV. With all that hard work, the lacrosse team must be very fit. Fit as in outfit, because the ASDY dress code is something that we need to address. Norza Whale and Isaac Guzman take us there. Dress code is a simple way to keep students focused and serious. Even though students violate the code weekly, there are explanations. I do understand where students come from, where it can be difficult sometimes, as far as what, um, like the shorts and what is available in stores and what's in fashion. So I understand where sometimes it can be a little difficult. Students are mostly fine with the dress code, but they would vouch for some changes. Um, I think I would um, make dress code less uh, strict and I would uh, do it for the amount of coverage, not how I don't know, long your shorts are. While it is embarrassing, there are specific reasons for getting dress coded. When I'm dress coding, I look for what the, uh, what the violations may be um, and um, obviously I have to do my best to uh, you know, be respectful. From students to staff, there are many different views on the dress code each with reasons supporting their ideas. This has been Isaac Guzman reporting for KBTV. You know someone that kind of sucks? Then we have a dress code. Let us remain calm. I personally am glad that we decided to talk about it. It's something that we will all have to deal with. What's with all the food puns? Well, coming up next is KBTV's People in Our Neighborhood segment about local restaurants. Judge Vasca and Sasha Kenrati give us the tea. For some students, Rosewood may just be Keeling's surrounding neighborhood. But to other students, it means good food, great restaurants, and amazing experiences. For some students, Rosewood may just be Keeling's surrounding neighborhood. But to others, it means great restaurants, good food, and amazing experiences. And so um, employees try to get a little closer to you, like they actually have a conversation with you and ask how your day is going and they're a lot more friendly. With good restaurants comes a great neighborhood, and restaurants have a large effect on that. I am born and raised here in Austin, Texas, and uh, when I grew up, you know, this was a completely different place. And now, you know, it's grown, you know, old for the new community of all joined together. And barbecue, you know, 
It's a great way to bring people together. Eating at a restaurant can be easy enough, but there are a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into a restaurant. And this work has its own challenges. Really getting to know the neighborhood. Uh, I've been doing it for about a year here at this shop, so now I know this with the, every street within a couple miles from here now, you know, the area like the back of my hand. Though there are many challenges in restaurants, employees can work through them, and the effect on the neighborhood is worth it. Stay tuned for part two of Restaurants in Our Neighborhood. This has been Judge Baskin reporting for KVTV. Hey Hornets, do you know how many times me and Evie said the word KBTV this episode? Email your responses to kristenscott at austinisd.org for the chance to win a prize. Also, feel free to rewatch this video at https colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash kbtv3. This has been Evie Barnard and Alice Scott. Thanks for watching KBTV. Keeling's number one source for news and information. Yes, right, we're done. You have to take the cameras. I'll take the stands. Yeah, you have to stand. She's a stand person. I'm the stand in. Ha. Ha. You were a woman.